Hi there everyone, I've just dropped the kids off at school and I have a few hours to myself so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you around my garden and you can have a look at what I've been up to this week. Um, something I'm really excited to show you is I've actually finished off the strawberry patch. Oh, it was so much effort moving all the compost and mulch but I think the final results have turned out pretty good and I'm quite happy with it. What else? This week I have planted up most of my seedlings and plants that I've wanted to put in the ground that were in my little nursery area um, and also I've been digging up a few more plants that I wanted to overwinter in the greenhouse. So I'll show you all of that and then also in this video I will be doing a little garden harvest as well. So let's get straight into the video now. A few weeks ago I showed you this um, upcycled garden project that I did using um, this old chest or box that I found thrown out on the side of the road and I filled it with these ornamental kale and I love how you can still get that pop of colour in winter with ornamental kale rather than relying on flowers. I think it's turned out quite nice and I love that I have it here by the front door so visitors who come to the house get to see this lovely display. The camellia tree in the front garden is still flowering and dropping all of its petals down on the ground making this beautiful path that I love walking on every year. Some more ornamental kale underneath this archway. I think I'm gonna definitely put in more of these in the garden. I just love pansies. Look at the color of this one, it's gorgeous. This Felicity plant makes a wonderful cottage garden addition with its beautiful purpley blue daisy type flowers and they actually flower both in autumn and winter in my garden so it's a real winner for me and the other great thing about them is they seem really really drought tolerant so it's a win-win so I'm now over here where the raised veggie garden area is and I want to do a little bit of harvesting in here today not too much because there isn't actually really a lot to be picking at the moment. Kind of a bit in between. Um, I do spot a couple of beans there. And there are some um, kale, radishes, some turnips that I can pick. Before I do the harvest, I just want to show you some brassicas over here. So I have planted brassicas all around the garden but in this particular area here I had it covered with netting and I decided to take the netting off. Um, I'm not really a big fan of it and um, what I'm just going to have to do instead is just come out here probably on a nightly basis and check for slugs and snails. Um, and in this section I have about nine plants. They're quite small at the moment but they have put on a lot of growth compared to the, the tiny seedlings they were when I put them in. I've got um, cauliflower um, and also some broccoli in here. I've got some purple broccoli, Romanesco cauliflower. Um, just a nice selection, a nice mix in here and I'm so excited to see these grow and hopefully I'll be harvesting them come springtime. So let me go over to the rest of the garden beds here and pull out a few delicious edibles. So I have some turnips in here. I'm gonna go and pick all these out. They're definitely ready now. These ones are a lot smaller. I'll pop the name up on the screen. Um, really lovely looking little turnips. Um, that you can just put straight into a roasting tray and they taste so good on a lovely cold winter's day. I just spotted a really big one in here. Let me grab these. Oh wow, look at that one. I probably shouldn't have let it get that big. Oh, and there's a little tiny one beside it. Oh well. It's a little cluster here. I'll just pick this one off. The other two are still quite small. I'll leave them in there. So these are going to be for dinner tonight. 
and I've made a bit more space down here to put some more seeds in. I'll probably maybe put some radishes or some other quick growing vegetable in this section. And I did have someone ask me about um, what I do to amend the soil and get it ready for springtime. Well, um, I'm not sure if I actually shared with you, but um, this garden, raised garden bed area is actually only around nine months old. So it's coming up to its one year anniversary. And prior to these um, raised beds, um, I just had in-ground garden. So for the moment, um, my style of cottage gardening is I just kind of intermingle plants together. So I don't really do um, crop rotation as such. But how I do amend the soil is I um, just put in some more compost some manure so chicken manure from their chickens in the garden i put in some cow manure as well um and that kind of seems to work well but we'll see how we go over the years i might change how i do it but for the moment the plants all seem pretty happy and are growing really really well going to pick a few radishes now there's some there let's give it a big yank pull them out and I'll add these to the pot or oh, you can see that one there is split and um, we have had quite a lot of rain this week and um, so that may have been the cause of it like a sudden amount of rain or overwatering caused it to open up like that and um, it's still perfectly fine to eat I'll just wash it and check it and make sure it's all right there's one here so this um this packet that I put in here, these were called the uh, um, Easter egg, I think that's what they call them, Easter egg mix. Um, but I have put some radishes in other parts of the garden, like there's a watermelon radish and a purple one. I think that's one here that was in the mix. And um, that way I'll know exactly what I'm getting from them. Okay, let me go and show you the strawberry patch. So here's the new strawberry patch that I was talking about doing last week. Um, it took me ages to fill these up. Um, what I used was I used mushroom compost. Um, because I've added in so many new areas into the garden, um, I, haven't I don't make enough compost to fill the new bed. So I have to order it in. And lucky enough, I have a really good um, garden supply centre nearby where they deliver in bulk so I got two cubic meters of mushroom compost and I used it here and there's all my little strawberry plants so hopefully spring summer time this will be covered with strawberry flowers strawberries and in that center in this one just up here I've actually sprinkled some um, poppies in there as well and I thought that would look nice the red poppies with the red strawberries and up here on this wall here I have an old CD case that's also red that I'm going to upcycle into um, a bug hotel and I think it will just look lovely up there on this old wooden fence. Just quickly show you, I've um, cut back the um, cucumber melons and I've mulched it there. I haven't bothered taking the old vine off, I'll just let it die back first. I've got other things that are more important to be honest. Um, okay, let me show you some things that I have dug up and potted up to overwinter. This is the first one here. This is lemongrass. So usually every year with my lemongrass, it just dies back in the frost and then I buy a new plant um, in the um, springtime. It's such a shame to get such a big growth on it and then for it to die back. So I've made a decision to put it in a pot and I'll pop it in the greenhouse to overwinter it. I know it will take up quite a lot of space, but I think it's well worth the effort. Here's a few more of those um, eggplants and capsicums that have overwintered. And do you remember I was a little bit concerned about a couple of them that I had actually taken all the foliage off? Well, look what's after happening. They've both died on me. I think, at least, I think they're dead. I mean, I can't see any green there or anything, but I'll still leave them in the pots and just see how they go. But um, I might have learned a bit of a lesson there. It always helps to leave a bit of foliage on. And these other three here look really good. They're, I think it's going to be successful, hopefully, overwintering them. Lots of lovely lavender. Another great drought-tolerant plant. And these ones have really nice long stems. 
They look really good in flower arrangements. Look at this. I still have aphids. They are just devouring my broad beans. Um, I'm going to have to be more diligent and come out here and spray with my... Oh, well, hold on. I've just seen it even worse. Hold on. Show me. Let me show you. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Look at all the green fly on this one. And over here as well. So my organic spray that I use is I pretty much just use washing up liquid and dilute dilute it with water to make some sooty soapy water and I spray it but I don't know <laughs> is this gonna work with this many aphids that's crazy I really do hope I get some broad beans this year okay after seeing that I just need to calm down because that was so annoying so I've just come over to the orange tree my peaceful area <laughs> this is where I come I don't even meditate. I was going to say meditate, but this is where I come to try and relax. And over this way, I'm just going to show you that I've actually thinned out my poppies even more. I should probably really thin them out more than that, but I don't have the heart to do it at the moment. This one here has got quite big. Um, I really, really need to weed here. But look what else I've got here. Beautiful, cheery Johnny Jump Violas. My corn flowers are coming to an end now. I've actually got a seed head here. I've never tried to collect seeds from corn flowers before. I might give that a go. This is my last um, Anthony Parker salvia to cut back. It's finished now. I really need to cut it back. Probably this is the last time you're going to see it here beside this beautiful owl gate. Oh look, there's a little hoverfly. Look at this massive lemon on our lemon tree. It's huge. It's covered in fruit. Just waiting for them all to ripen up a bit. I'm gonna head inside now and get these all prepped and ready on a roasting tray for dinner tonight. And then I have a few other little um, chores to do around the house before I go and get the kids but thank you so much for watching this video I really do enjoy showing you around my garden and I appreciate all the support that you show me